Ah, uh, Hyrule, a land of sprawling landscapes, legendary heroes, and puzzles that make you question your entire existence. It's a place where every grass blade hides a rupee, every dark corner contains a secret, and chickens, or rather cuckoos, can bring swift justice to any unsuspecting player. But beyond the treasure chests, dungeons, and iconic Master Sword, The Legend of Zelda is much more than just another video game series. It's a legendary tale of adventure that has influenced generations of gamers, developers, and storytellers alike. Since its humble beginnings back in the 8-bit days of 1986, the Zelda franchise has captivated hearts, leaving behind a legacy that transcends consoles and genres. Whether you were introduced to the series through the early pixelated wonders of the original or the vast open world of Breath of the Wild, one thing is certain. You were part of something magical. Zelda games are not just adventures, they are timeless experiences, and like all great legends, it keeps evolving, finding new ways to surprise us. Today we will be going on a journey through the Zelda timeline, but uh, don't worry, no e confusing time paradoxes or endless hours of grass cutting for hearts here. Instead, we're going to explore the evolution of one of the greatest video game franchises ever created, from its 8-bit roots to the open-world revolution that is Breath of the Wild. Now get ready for an epic tale of innovation, passion, and of course, a few cuckoo chases along the way. If you are excited as we are about today's topic, show some love by liking and subscribing to Retro Pocket for more amazing content. The birth of a legend origins in early games, the story of The Legend of Zelda began in 1986, a time when the gaming world was still in its infancy. Leading the charge was Shigeru Miyamoto, the legendary game designer behind Nintendo's most iconic franchises, including Super Mario Bros. For Miyamoto, the inspiration for Zelda came from his childhood memories of exploring forests, caves, and lakes around his home in Sonobi, Japan. He wanted to replicate that sense of adventure and discovery in a video game, and thus, the blueprint for The Legend of Zelda was born. At its core, The Legend of Zelda 1986 was revolutionary for several reasons. Released on the Famicom Disk System in Japan and the Nintendo Entertainment System worldwide, it introduced players to a non-linear open world where exploration and experimentation were key. Unlike many of the games at the time, which followed a more structured, level-based approach, Zelda allowed players to wander freely around the sprawling kingdom of Hyrule, uncovering hidden caves, dungeons, and treasure along the way. Players were tasked with guiding the silent hero Link on his quest to assemble the eight fragments of the Triforce of Wisdom to defeat the evil Ganon and rescue Princess Zelda. One of the most significant innovations of The Legend of Zelda was the introduction of save files. Prior to Zelda, most games either required players to complete the game in one sitting or rely on frustrating passwords to save progress. With Zelda, Nintendo introduced a battery-backed save system, allowing players to save their progress at any point and continue their adventure later. This change was groundbreaking and would become a standard feature in many games moving forward. The world of Hyrule itself was filled with mystery and challenge. Players started the game with nothing but a wooden sword and from there, they had to figure out how to progress through the game by discovering items, defeating enemies, and solving puzzles. The game's open-ended design allowed for a level of freedom and creativity rarely seen in games at the time. Players could tackle dungeons in any order, experiment with different items, and explore hidden secrets scattered across the map. The sense of freedom was a key component of the game's success, and it would become one of the defining features of the Zelda series as a whole. Another notable aspect of The Legend of Zelda was its top-down perspective. While many games of the era were side-scrolling platformers, Zelda's bird's-eye view allowed players to explore Hyrule from a different perspective. This design choice was particularly effective for the game's puzzle-solving and combat mechanics. Players had to use both strategy and reflexes to defeat enemies with items like bombs, bows, and boomerangs playing key roles in progressing through the game's many dungeons. The game also introduced several iconic elements that would become staples of the series. The Triforce, a magical artifact composed of three golden triangles, became central to the lore of the Zelda universe representing power, wisdom, and courage. Link himself, the green-clad hero with a sword and shield, would go on to become one of gaming's most recognizable protagonists. Even the game's memorable enemies, such as the Octoroks, Darknuts, and Lynels, became mainstays in the Zelda franchise. While the original The Legend of Zelda was a resounding success, Nintendo didn't rest on its laurels. Just one year later, in 1987, they released a direct sequel, Zelda II The Adventure of Link. 
However, rather than building on the formula established by the first game, Zelda 2 took a dramatically different approach. Gone was the top-down perspective. Instead, Zelda 2 adopted a side-scrolling view for much of the gameplay, with a greater emphasis on combat and platforming. It also introduced RPG elements such as experience points, leveling up, and learning new abilities. Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link divided the fanbase. While some appreciated its bold departure from the first game and its introduction of new mechanics, others found the game's high difficulty and departure from the open-world exploration of the original to be off-putting. Despite this, Zelda 2 made several important contributions to the series. For example, it introduced magic, which would go on to become a key feature in many future Zelda games, and it marked the first appearance of Dark Link, a shadowy doppelganger of the hero who would later become a recurring figure in the series. An interesting piece of trivia, the experience point system in Zelda 2 was originally going to be included in the first Legend of Zelda, but was ultimately cut to streamline the game's design. In Zelda 2, however, this RPG-style progression system was fully realized, allowing players to improve Link's attack power, magic, and health as they leveled up through combat. Despite the mixed reception, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link is now considered a cult classic. Its bold experimentation paved the way for future entries in the series to take creative risks, and many of its mechanics, such as the magic meter and side-scrolling segments, would reappear in later games in the franchise. The success of both The Legend of Zelda and Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link established Nintendo as a dominant force in the video game industry. The game sold millions of copies worldwide and cemented Link, Zelda, and Ganon as some of gaming's most standout characters. But more than that, these two titles laid the foundation for what would become one of the most beloved and enduring franchises in gaming history. As we look back on the origins of The Legend of Zelda, it's clear that the series was built on a foundation of innovation, creativity, and a desire to push the boundaries of what video games could be. Shigeru Miyamoto's vision of a game that captured the spirit of adventure resonated with players in a way that few games had before, and it set the stage for the Zelda series to become a cornerstone of the gaming world. A Link to the Past Expanding the World By the time 1991 rolled around, expectations were high for the next entry in the Zelda series. After the experimental nature of Zelda 2: The Adventure of Link, Nintendo was ready to take the series back to its roots while also expanding the world and gameplay in new and exciting ways. The result was The Legend of Zelda, a link to the past for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, a game that not only returned to the series' top-down perspective, but also set the standard for action-adventure games for years to come. A Link to the Past is often hailed as one of the greatest video games of all time, and it's not hard to see why. The game was a masterclass in game design, with a sprawling world that felt alive and full of secrets, intuitive gameplay mechanics, and a story that delved deeper into the mythology of Hyrule. It was a return to the formula that made the original Legend of Zelda so beloved, but with a host of new features and improvements that elevated the series to new heights. One of the most significant innovations in A Link to the Past was the introduction of the Light World Dark World mechanic. Early in the game, Link finds himself transported to the Dark World, a twisted mirror version of Hyrule where evil reigns. To restore balance, players had to switch between the two worlds using the magic mirror to travel between them. This dual world mechanic added an entirely new layer of depth to exploration and puzzle solving as actions taken in one world could affect the other. For example, altering the landscape in the light world might reveal a hidden path in the dark world or vice versa. The clever use of this mechanic made Hyrule feel even larger and more interconnected than ever before. A Link to the Past also marked the debut of several iconic elements that would go on to become staples of the Zelda series. This was the game that introduced players to the Master Sword, the legendary blade that would become Link's weapon of choice in many future adventures. The moment when Link pulls the Master Sword from its pedestal in the Lost Woods is one of the most memorable scenes in the game and has since been recreated in several other Zelda titles. Additionally, A Link to the Past introduced new items that would go on to become series mainstays such as the Hookshot, Pegasus Boots, and Magic Hammer. These items not only gave players new ways to interact with the environment, but also opened up new possibilities for puzzle solving and combat. The Hookshot, for example, allowed Link to traverse gaps and reach previously inaccessible areas, while the Pegasus Boots let him dash at high speeds to break through barriers or outrun enemies. The game also refined the combat and dungeon design. 
While the original Legend of Zelda featured a series of relatively straightforward dungeons, A Link to the Past up the ante with more complex and challenging dungeons, each with its own unique theme and set of puzzles. These dungeons were intricately designed with multiple floors, hidden rooms, and branching paths. Players had to think critically and make use of all the tools at their disposal to progress. The bosses in A Link to the Past were similarly more complex, each requiring specific strategies and items to defeat. One of the most remarkable aspects of A Link to the Past was its sense of discovery. The game was packed with secrets, from hidden heart pieces to mysterious caves and treasure troves. Exploration was heavily rewarded, and players were encouraged to stray from the beaten path to uncover hidden goodies. The overworld of Hyrule felt vast and alive, with a day-night cycle that added to the immersion. Whether you were uncovering a hidden fairy fountain, discovering a new warp point between the worlds, or solving a tricky puzzle to unlock a powerful item, the game was constantly rewarding curiosity and persistence. Narratively, A Link to the Past expanded on the lore of the Zelda universe, introducing the concept of the Seven Sages, powerful individuals who had sealed Genon away in the Dark World. As Link, players had to rescue the descendants of these sages, who had been captured by the dark wizard Aganim. The story felt grand and epic, with Link's journey taking him across the entire kingdom of Hyrule and beyond. It was also the first game in the series to delve deeper into the relationship between Link, Zelda, and Ganon, establishing the trifecta of power, wisdom, and courage that would become central to the series' mythology. One of the most enduring aspects of A Link to the Past is its visual style. The game took full advantage of the SNES's 16-bit capabilities, with vibrant colors, detailed sprites, and a contrast between the lush, idyllic light world and the dark, foreboding dark world was visually striking, and the, the game's use of color and shading helped bring the world of Hyrule to life in a way that hadn't been possible. The soundtrack of A Link to the Past, composed by the legendary Koji Kondo, is another highlight. The music perfectly complements the game's atmosphere, with memorable tracks like the Overworld theme, Hyrule Castle theme, and Dark World theme becoming instant classics. The game's use of music to set the tone and mood of different areas helped make A Link to the Past one of the most immersive experiences on the SNES. Critically and commercially, A Link to the Past was a massive success. It sold millions of copies worldwide and received near-universal acclaim from both players and critics. The game was praised for its innovative gameplay, stunning visuals, and engaging story, and it quickly became a benchmark for the action-adventure genre. In many ways, A Link to the Past defined what a Zelda game could be, laying the groundwork for future entries in the series. Beyond its impact on the Zelda series, A Link to the Past also had a profound influence on the gaming industry as a whole. Its blend of exploration, puzzle solving, and combat became the template for countless action-adventure games that followed, and its dual-world mechanic has been emulated in numerous other titles. In the years since its release, A Link to the Past has been re-released on various platforms, including the Game Boy Advance and the Virtual Console, allowing new generations of players to experience the magic of this classic adventure. Its legacy lives on not only in future Zelda games, but also in the countless other games that have drawn inspiration from its innovative design. Ultimately, A Link to the Past stands as a statement to the enduring appeal of the Zelda franchise. It captured the essence of what makes the series so special, exploration, discovery, and a sense of wonder, and it did so with a level of polish and innovation that few games of its time could match. For many fans, it remains the definitive Zelda experience, a game that continues to be celebrated and cherished decades after its release. The Ocarina of Time, revolutionizing 3D adventure games. In 1998, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released on the Nintendo 64, and it didn't just change the Zelda franchise, it redefined what was possible in the gaming world as a whole. Ocarina of Time was the first game in the series to transition from the 2D world of its predecessors to a fully realized 3D environment, and it set a new standard for adventure games. The innovations introduced in Ocarina of Time laid the foundation for 3D action-adventure games that followed, making it one of the most influential and celebrated video games of all time. One of the game's most revolutionary features was the Z-targeting system. At the time, many 3D games struggled with the complexity of managing combat and movement in a three-dimensional space. Z-targeting, which allowed players to lock onto enemies or objects, made combat intuitive and smooth. Players could easily switch between attacking, dodging, and using items, all while keeping their focus on the enemy. 
This targeting system was not only praised for making combat more manageable, but it also enabled more complex battle strategies, as players had to think about the best way to approach each enemy. The influence of Z-targeting extended far beyond the Zelda series. Many future 3D games adopted similar systems to solve the challenges of combat and movement in a 3D world. It's no exaggeration to say that Ocarina of Time set the standard for how 3D action-adventure games should handle combat, and its impact can still be felt in modern game design. In addition to revolutionizing combat, Ocarina of Time introduced a beautifully realized 3D version of Hyrule that players could explore at their own pace. The world felt alive with vibrant towns, sprawling fields, and dense forests. One of the most loved locations in the game was Hyrule Field, a vast open area that served as a hub connecting different regions of the world. For many players, their first glimpse of Hyrule Field was a defining moment, as the game opened up and revealed the sheer scale of the world waiting to be explored. The shift to 3D also allowed for more dynamic dungeon design. Each dungeon in Ocarina of Time felt like a massive puzzle box, with interconnected rooms, moving platforms, and hidden pathways. The dungeons were masterfully crafted, with each one introducing new gameplay mechanics or items that expanded Link's abilities and opened up new ways to interact with the environment. The addition of verticality in the level design, thanks to the 3D space, allowed for more intricate puzzles and more exciting traversal challenges. One of the standout dungeons in Ocarina of Time is the Water Temple, which has gained a reputation over the years for being one of the most challenging and complex dungeons in the series. Players had to manipulate water levels, swim through flooded chambers, and constantly change between different equipment to progress. While some players found the Water Temple frustrating, others appreciated its intricate design and the way it pushed them to think critically about how to navigate the space. Ocarina of Time also introduced an epic narrative that elevated the stakes of the Zelda series. The game's story centers on Link, a young boy from the Kokiri Forest who is tasked with stopping the evil Ganondorf from obtaining the Triforce and plunging the world into darkness. Along the way, Link must awaken the Seven Sages, defeat powerful bosses, and navigate the flow of time itself. The time travel mechanic in Ocarina of Time was a groundbreaking feature that added layers of depth to both the gameplay and the story. Early in the game, Link pulls the Master Sword from its pedestal in the Temple of Time, only to awaken seven years later as an adult in a much darker version of Hyrule. The world has changed, towns have been destroyed, characters have grown older, and Ganondorf has taken control. Players could switch between Young Link and Adult Link, and many puzzles required players to navigate both time periods to progress. This mechanic not only added variety to the gameplay, but also emphasized the themes of destiny, growth, and the passage of time. The emotional weight of the story, combined with the personal journey of Link, helped make Ocarina of Time one of the most impactful games in the series. The game's central themes, courage, friendship, and the battle between good and evil were universal, and players felt deeply connected to the characters and the world. Iconic moments like the first time Link meets Princess Zelda, the battle with Phantom Ganon in the Forest Temple, and the final showdown with Ganondorf became etched into the memories of players worldwide. One of the game's most unique features was the Ocarina of Time itself, a magical instrument that allowed Link to play songs that had various effects on the world. Players used the C buttons on the Nintendo 64 controller to play different notes, and learning new songs became a central part of the gameplay. Each song had a specific function, whether it was summoning a pwn of the horse, manipulating time, or teleporting to different locations. Ocarina of Time also introduced several items that became staples of the Zelda series. The Hookshot, Lens of Truth, and Fairy Bow are just a few of the memorable tools that players use to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. The variety of items combined with the game's intricate dungeon design made each dungeon feel fresh and challenging. Boss fights were another highlight, with each boss requiring a combination of strategy, reflexes, and item usage to defeat. Memorable bosses like Volvagia, Bongo Bongo, and Twinrova each provided unique challenges that tested the player's mastery of the game's mechanics. Another groundbreaking feature of Ocarina of Time was its day and night cycle. 
Time passed in real time as players explored the world, with the game's environment changing depending on the time of day. At night, stall children would rise from the ground in Hyrule Field, and certain characters or events would only appear during specific times. This added to the immersion and made Hyrule feel like a living, breathing world. The game also featured dynamic weather effects, such as rain and thunderstorms, further enhancing the atmosphere. The soundtrack of Ocarina of Time, composed by Koji Kondo, is widely regarded as one of the best in video game history. From the serene melodies of Zelda's lullaby to the haunting notes of the Song of Storms, the music played a crucial role in setting the tone and mood of the game. Each location had its own theme, and the music would often change dynamically depending on the situation. When it was released, Ocarina of Time received universal acclaim from both critics and players. It won numerous Game of the Year awards and is often cited as one of the greatest video games ever made. Its influence on the gaming industry cannot be overstated. Many of the design principles and mechanics introduced in Ocarina of Time became the blueprint for future 3D action-adventure games. Beyond its technical achievements, Ocarina of Time had a profound cultural impact. It cemented The Legend of Zelda as one of the most important franchises in gaming, and its characters, music, and world became iconic. For many players, Ocarina of Time was a transformative experience, one that demonstrated the potential of video games as a medium for storytelling, creativity, and immersion. In the decades since its release, Ocarina of Time has been re-released on multiple platforms, including the Nintendo 3DS, where it received a visual overhaul while maintaining the original's core gameplay. The game's legacy continues to endure, and it remains a touchstone for game developers and players alike. Majora's Mask, a dark and unique chapter. In 2000, just two years after the groundbreaking success of Ocarina of Time, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask was released for the Nintendo 64. Unlike its predecessor, which was a grand, sweeping epic, Majora's Mask took a decidedly darker and more intimate approach. Built using the same game engine as Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask was developed under tight time constraints with the goal of creating a fresh Zelda experience within a limited development window. Despite these constraints, Majora's Mask managed to carve out a unique place within the Zelda series, becoming one of the most beloved and mysterious entries in the franchise. One of the most striking aspects of Majora's Mask is its tone. Where Ocarina of Time presented a classic good versus evil narrative, Majora's Mask delved into deeper, more philosophical themes, including grief, mortality, and the inevitability of time. The game's central mechanic, the three-day cycle, embodied these themes, creating an ever-present sense of urgency as players raced against the clock to prevent the moon from crashing into the world of Termina. The moon itself, with its grotesque, almost menacing face, loomed over players, constantly reminding them of the impending doom. At the heart of Majora's Mask is the story of Link, who finds himself in a parallel world called Termina after chasing the mischievous Skull Kid into the forest. Termina is a land that feels both familiar and alien, populated by characters who look like the inhabitants of Hyrule, but with their own distinct identities and lives. The central conflict revolves around the Skull Kid, a lonely child who has stolen the cursed Majora's Mask, a powerful artifact that grants its wearer immense malevolent power. The Skull Kid's bitterness and loneliness amplified by the mask drive him to summon the moon to crash into Termina, destroying everything. The defining feature of Majora's Mask is its three-day cycle. Players have only 72 in-game hours to save Termina before the moon crashes, but they can use the Ocarina of Time to reset the clock, effectively reliving the same three days over and over. Characters in Majora's Mask followed specific schedules and their routines would reset each time the player rewound time. This meant that players had to plan their actions carefully, figuring out the best way to use their limited time to complete side quests, solve puzzles, and gather the resources needed to stop the moon. The Bomber's Notebook became an essential tool for players, helping them track the schedules of various characters and note important events that occurred at specific times. Each NPC had their own unique story arc, and players could choose to help them in different ways, often leading to bittersweet or tragic outcomes. For instance, the heartbreaking side quest involving Kafei and Anju, two lovers separated by a curse, 
required players to carefully manage their time over the course of three in-game days to reunite the couple. Even then, their reunion was fleeting, as the threat of the moon's impact still loomed large. What set Majora's Mask apart from other Zelda games was its exploration of darker themes, particularly through its portrayal of grief and loss. The five main regions of Termina Clock Town, Woodfall, Snowhead, Great Bay, and Akana Canyon each represented a different stage of grief, as theorized by many fans. Clock Town, the starting point of the game, was filled with denial as its citizens largely ignored the impending catastrophe of the falling moon. In Snowhead, players encounter a Goron village mourning the loss of their leader, Darmani, embodying the stage of anger. Throughout the game, Link could collect a variety of masks, each granting him unique abilities. Some masks transformed Link into different forms, such as the Deku Scrub, Goron, or Zora, allowing him to access new areas and use specialized abilities. For example, as a Zora, Link could swim through the waters of Great Bay, while his Goron form allowed him to roll at high speeds and break through obstacles. Other masks, like the Bunny Hood or Stone Mask, provided passive abilities, such as increased speed or invisibility. The transformations were more than just gameplay mechanics, they also played into the game's deeper emotional themes. Each transformation was linked to a deceased character, with Link effectively taking on the spirit of that individual. For example, the Deku Mask contained the spirit of a Deku butler's son, and the Goron Mask housed the spirit of Darmani, the fallen Goron hero. This concept of death and transformation further emphasized the game's focus on loss and identity, giving the player a deeper connection to the world and its inhabitants. Majora's Mask also broke away from the traditional Zelda dungeon structure. Instead of the typical eight or more dungeons seen in previous games, Majora's Mask had only four main dungeons, each tied to one of the regions of Termina. However, these dungeons were some of the most challenging and creatively designed in the series. The Stone Tower Temple in particular is regarded as one of the most complex and mind-bending dungeons in Zelda history, requiring players to flip the entire temple upside down to solve its puzzles. The focus on side quests and character-driven stories gave Majora's Mask a more personal and intimate feel compared to its predecessors. The game's side quests were often just as important as the main storyline, and players could spend hours helping the citizens of Termina with their problems, from reuniting long-lost lovers to finding missing children. Each side quest was a small story in itself, and the rewards often came in the form of new masks or upgrades, further encouraging exploration and interaction with the world. Despite its darker themes and more intimate scope, Majora's Mask was a critical and commercial success. It sold over 3 million copies worldwide and received widespread praise for its innovative mechanics, emotional depth, and unique atmosphere. However, it wasn't without its detractors. Some players found the time-based mechanics stressful or frustrating, and the game's departure from the more traditional Zelda formula was polarizing. Over time, however, Majora's Mask has developed a devoted fan base, with many players appreciating its bold departure from the typical Zelda experience. Its themes of loss, identity, and the passage of time have resonated deeply with those who played it, and it has become a cult classic within the Zelda series. The game's re-release on the Nintendo 3DS in 2015 introduced Majora's Mask to a new generation of players, further cementing its place as one of the most beloved and unique entries in the franchise. In the end, its dark, surreal atmosphere and its focus on time, transformation, and the inevitability of change make it one of the most memorable and emotionally impactful games in the Zelda series. The Wind Waker, Sailing into Uncharted Waters When The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker was revealed in 2001 for the Nintendo GameCube, it took fans completely by surprise. Gone was the more realistic art style that many had come to expect after Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask instead. The Wind Waker featured a bright, cell-shaded world that looked like something straight out of a Saturday morning cartoon. At first, not everyone was on board. Some fans weren't sure what to make of this dramatic shift, and the game's cartoony visuals sparked controversy. But once the game was released in 2002, it quickly became clear that The Wind Waker was much more than its art style. It was an unforgettable adventure 
that pushed the Zelda series in new and exciting directions. Let's start with the elephant in the room, that cel-shaded art style. When the first trailers for The Wind Waker dropped, people weren't just surprised, they were shocked. Many had expected a more mature take on the series after the brief glimpse of a realistic Link fighting Astalfos in a GameCube tech demo. But Nintendo had other plans. They embraced a bold, colorful aesthetic that gave the game a distinct look, often referred to as Toon Link. This decision to go for a more cartoonish, expressive art style didn't sit well with everyone at first, but in hindsight, it was a genius move. The cell-shaded visuals not only gave the game a timeless quality, but they also allowed for more expressive characters and dynamic animations. Today, the art style is one of the game's most beloved features, and The Wind Waker still looks stunning, even decades after its release. Beyond the visuals, The Wind Waker took the Zelda formula and put it on the open sea, literally. The game is set in a world where the Kingdom of Hyrule has been submerged beneath an endless ocean, with only a few islands scattered across the vast expanse of water. This change in setting brought a whole new level of exploration to the series. Instead of traveling across land, Link now sailed the seas in his trusty boat, the King of Red Lions, using the Wind Waker baton to control the direction of the wind. Sailing from island to island gave the game a sense of freedom and adventure that was different from anything in the series before it. The open ocean became your playground, full of hidden treasures, pirate ships, and mysterious islands waiting to be explored. The sailing mechanics were a central part of the gameplay in The Wind Waker. Players used The Wind Waker, a magical conductor's baton, to control the wind and guide their boat across the ocean. While some players initially found the sailing to be slow and repetitive, it eventually became one of the game's most iconic features. There was something undeniably peaceful about gliding across the waves, listening to the music swell as you explored the vast open sea. It captured the spirit of adventure in a way that few games ever have. Of course, The Wind Waker wasn't just about sailing, there were plenty of dungeons, puzzles, and epic boss battles to be had. The game's dungeons were as creative and challenging as ever, filled with intricate puzzles and clever mechanics that made full use of the game's new tools. One of the standout out items was the Deku Leaf, which allowed Link to glide through the air or blow gusts of wind to solve puzzles. Then there was the Grappling Hook, which could be used to swing across gaps or snatch items from enemies. And let's not forget the boss fights. The Wind Waker featured some of the most memorable bosses in the series, from the giant plant monster Kalademos to the fire-breathing dragon Goma. The combat in The Wind Waker was fluid and fun with a focus on timing and precision thanks to the game's parry mechanic that let players dodge and counterattack with style. The story of The Wind Waker was also a standout. Set hundreds of years after the events of Ocarina of Time, the game follows a new incarnation of Link, who embarks on a quest to rescue his sister Errol from the clutches of a dark figure known as Ganon. As Link's journey unfolds, he learns that the world he inhabits is actually the flooded remains of the ancient kingdom of Hyrule, and that he is destined to defeat Ganon, just as the Hero of Time did before him. The game's story was filled with emotional moments, particularly in its final act, where players discover the fate of Hyrule and confront Ganon in an epic showdown beneath the waves. One of the most poignant characters in the game is Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule, the last king of Hyrule, who takes on the form of the King of Red Lions to guide Link on his quest. His final speech, where he laments the loss of his kingdom and expresses hope for a new world free from the burdens of the past, is one of the most moving moments in the entire series. The emotional weight of the story, combined with the game's whimsical tone and vibrant world, made for a narrative that was both heartwarming and bittersweet. Despite its critical acclaim, The Wind Waker initially faced some backlash from fans who were put off by the art style and the slower pace of the sailing. However, over time, the game's reputation grew, and it's now regarded as one of the best entries in the Zelda series. The cell-shaded visuals, once controversial, have aged beautifully, giving the game a timeless quality that still holds up today. In fact, The Wind Waker HD, a remastered version for the Wii U released in 2013, further enhanced the game's visuals and addressed some of the pacing issues, particularly with the sailing, making the game even more accessible to new players. Over the years, The Wind Waker has become a fan favorite, with many considering it one of the best Zelda games ever made. Its unique art style, combined with its innovative gameplay and emotional story, has left a lasting legacy in the world of video games. 
The game's influence can be seen in later Zelda titles, particularly in its focus on exploration and the use of creative items to solve puzzles. In the end, The Wind Waker proved that sometimes, taking a bold artistic risk can pay off in ways that no one expects. What began as a controversial departure from tradition has since become a beloved classic, standing as a statement to the enduring power of creativity and imagination in game design. Whether you're sailing across the great sea, battling a massive sea monster, or uncovering the secrets of a long-lost kingdom, The Wind Waker is an adventure that continues to capture the hearts of players everywhere. Twilight Princess – A Return to Darker Themes in 2006, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess arrived on both the Nintendo GameCube and as a launch title for the Nintendo Wii, offering fans a darker, more mature take on the Zelda series. After the bright, colorful world of The Wind Waker, Twilight Princess felt like a return to the more serious, brooding tones of Ocarina of Time. With its realistic art style, somber atmosphere, and intense narrative, Twilight Princess aimed to capture the hearts of longtime fans while also appealing to a new generation of players. The game starts with a very different take on Link than we've seen before. He's a simple farm boy living a quiet life in the rural village of Orden, a peaceful existence that, of course, doesn't last long. Soon enough, Link is swept into an epic battle between light and darkness after a mysterious force from the Twilight Realm begins overtaking parts of Hyrule. As a result, Link is transformed into a wolf, and this introduces one of the game's core gameplay mechanics playing as Wolf Link. With the help of his enigmatic companion, Midna, Link embarks on a quest to restore light to Hyrule and confront the evil forces at work. The duality between Link's human form and Wolf Link is one of the game's defining features. In the Twilight Realm, Link is forced into his wolf form, which changes how he interacts with the world. As a wolf, Link can use his enhanced senses to track scents, dig for hidden items, and communicate with animals. This transformation adds a fresh layer to the gameplay, particularly in terms of puzzle solving. The game frequently switches between the regular world and the Twilight Realm, creating a dynamic interplay between these two contrasting environments. And speaking of contrasts, the visual tone of Twilight Princess is about as far from the Wind Waker as you can get. The game's art style is much more realistic and gritty, with muted colors and detailed character models that emphasize a darker, more serious aesthetic. This was a deliberate response to the initial backlash over The Wind Waker's cartoonish visuals, and it worked many fans praise Twilight Princess for its more mature look. Hyrule in this game feels more grounded, with sweeping landscapes, shadowy dungeons, and atmospheric towns that give the world a rich, lived-in feel. Whether you're riding across Hyrule Field or delving into a dark, twisting dungeon, the game's visuals immerse you in a world that feels both familiar and ominous. One of the standout aspects of Twilight Princess is its story, which blends the traditional elements of the Zelda series with a deeper, more emotional narrative. Much of the story revolves around Midna, the mysterious and sassy imp who acts as Link's guide throughout the game. Midna isn't your typical sidekick, she's snarky, sarcastic, and often seems to have her own agenda. As the game progresses, we learn more about her backstory and her connection to the Twilight Realm, and her character development becomes one of the most engaging aspects of the narrative. By the end of the game, Midna's story takes a surprisingly emotional turn, cementing her as one of the most memorable characters in the Zelda series. The villains of Twilight Princess also leave a lasting impression impression. Zant, the self-proclaimed king of the Twilight Realm, is initially presented as the primary antagonist. His bizarre, erratic behavior and menacing presence make him a compelling villain early on. However, it's eventually revealed that Ganondorf, yes, the big bad himself, is pulling the strings behind the scenes, using Zant as a puppet to take over Hyrule. Ganondorf's return is a major plot twist that sets up the game's climactic final battle, where Link must face off against him in an epic showdown that echoes the legendary conflicts of the past. In terms of gameplay, Twilight Princess strikes a balance between traditional Zelda elements and new mechanics. The game's dungeons are some of the best in the series, each offering unique puzzles and challenges that take full advantage of the game's dual-world mechanic. Items like the spinner, a spinning top that lets Link glide along special rails, and the Dominion Rod, which allows Link to animate statues, add new layers to the dungeon puzzles. The dungeons themselves are sprawling and intricately designed, with memorable themes and bosses. Whether you're navigating the eerie, haunted corridors of the Arbiter's Grounds, or exploring the frozen caverns of Snow Peak Ruins, each dungeon feels distinct and creatively crafted. 
The combat in Twilight Princess was also a significant step forward for the series. The game introduced a series of special combat moves that Link could learn from a mysterious warrior known as the Hero Shade, who is revealed to be the ghost of the Hero of Time from Ocarina of Time. These combat skills, like the Shield Attack, Helm Splitter, and Mortal Draw, gave players more options in battle and made combat feel more fluid and dynamic. The introduction of mounted combat, where Link can fight enemies while riding a Pona, also added a new layer of excitement to the game's action sequences, particularly in the iconic horseback fight against King Bulblin on Elden Bridge. One of the game's most iconic scenes takes place during the battle between Link and Zant in the Palace of Twilight. Zant's unhinged behavior and erratic fighting style make for a memorable and intense boss fight. The palace itself, shrouded in eerie darkness, perfectly captures the mysterious and foreboding atmosphere of the Twilight Realm. The contrast between the two worlds, the stakes of the battle, and the sense of impending doom all culminate in a powerful and emotional confrontation. The game's motion controls were a major talking point when Twilight Princess was released on the Wii. Players could use the Wii Remote to swing Link's sword and aim his bow with precision. While some players found the motion controls to be a bit clunky at times, Others appreciated the added level of immersion they brought to the game. It was clear that Nintendo was experimenting with new ways to interact with the world of Zelda, and Twilight Princess was the first step in that direction. Later, when the game was ported to the Nintendo Wii U as Twilight Princess HD, the motion controls were refined, and the game received a visual upgrade that enhanced its already stunning graphics. Beyond the epic dungeons and boss fights, Twilight Princess was filled with side quests and secrets. From rounding up golden bugs for Agatha, the self-proclaimed Bug Princess, to fishing in the tranquil waters of Lake Hylia, the game was packed with activities that rewarded exploration and curiosity. Collecting heart pieces, upgrading items, and unlocking new abilities were all part of the fun, and the game's world was rich with hidden treasures and surprises. In terms of its legacy, Twilight Princess stands as one of the most beloved entries in the Zelda series. Its darker tone, intricate dungeons, and emotional storytelling left a lasting impact on fans. While it was criticized by some for being too similar to Ocarina of Time, many appreciated it as a spiritual successor to that game offering a more mature and polished take on the classic Zelda formula. Twilight Princess balanced nostalgia with innovation, creating a game that felt both familiar and fresh. The game's success on both the GameCube and Wii solidified its place in Zelda history, and its HD remaster on the Wii U introduced it to a new generation of players. Twilight Princess remains a fan favorite, with its dark atmosphere, engaging story, and satisfying gameplay standing the test of time. Skyward Sword – The Origins of the Master Sword In 2011, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword took flight on the Nintendo Wii, bringing with it a new adventure that was both a prequel to the entire Zelda timeline and a bold experiment in motion controls. Skyward Sword stands out in the series not just for its ambitious use of the Wii's motion controls, but also for its deep, lore-heavy narrative that explores the origins of some of the most important elements in the Zelda mythos, including the Master Sword and the eternal conflict between Link, Zelda, and the forces of evil. Let's talk about the motion controls first because, for better or worse, they defined much of the experience. The Wii was in full swing during the development of Skyward Sword, and Nintendo wanted to make full use of the Wii Motion Plus accessory, which allowed for more precise motion tracking. In Skyward Sword, players physically swung the Wii Remote to control Link's sword, adding an extra layer of immersion to combat. Rather than just mashing buttons, you had to think carefully about how to swing the sword, as many enemies required specific angles of attack to defeat. For instance, certain enemies would block attacks from specific directions, forcing players to aim their sword strikes to exploit weaknesses. This added a strategic element to combat, but it also meant that your success in battle was tied directly to how well the motion controls worked. While some players loved the added immersion, others found the motion controls frustrating at times, especially when they didn't respond as accurately as intended. Swinging the remote to mimic sword strikes could feel satisfying, but it could also be a bit finicky, especially during intense battles or boss fights. Despite the mixed reception to the motion controls, Skyward Sword's combat system was undeniably innovative, and it remains one of the most distinctive aspects of the game. The world of Skyward Sword is divided between the floating islands of Skyloft and the surface world below. 
In the sky, Link navigates his adventure by riding on the back of a massive bird called a Loftwing, soaring from island to island in search of new challenges and treasures. The sky exploration brought a sense of openness and freedom to the game, but it wasn't as vast or densely packed with content as the ocean from The Wind Waker or the overworld from Twilight Princess. That said, flying on the Loftwing was a unique and fun way to get around, and it fit the game's sky-themed setting perfectly. Where Skyward Sword really shines is in its narrative and lore. This game serves as the origin story for the entire Zelda series, laying the groundwork for everything that follows. The game opens with Link as a student at the Knight Academy in Skyloft, a peaceful city floating in the clouds. However, it doesn't take long before Link's childhood friend Zelda is swept down to the surface world by a mysterious dark force. With the help of a mystical sword spirit named Fi, Link embarks on a quest to rescue Zelda and uncover the truth behind the surface world, an ancient land long abandoned by the people of Skyloft. As the story unfolds, players learn that Zelda is the mortal incarnation of the goddess Hylia, and that Link is destined to become the chosen hero who wields the Master Sword, the Sacred Blade, capable of defeating evil. The relationship between Link and Zelda in Skyward Sword is more personal and emotionally resonant than in many previous Zelda games. They aren't just hero and princess here, they're close friends, and their bond drives much of the story's emotional weight. Zelda's transformation from Link's childhood friend to the embodiment of the goddess Hylia adds a layer of complexity to her character, making her more than just a damsel in distress. The villain of the game, Girahim, is also one of the most memorable in the series. A flamboyant and unsettling figure, Girahim is determined to resurrect his master, the Demon King Demise, and his encounters with Link are filled with dramatic flair and tension. Girahim's relentless pursuit of Zelda and his creepy, almost theatrical demeanor make him a standout antagonist. However, the true big bad is Demise himself, a towering figure of pure evil who serves as the precursor to Ganon. In the game's final battle, Link faces off against Demise in an epic sword fight, and it's here that the game establishes the eternal curse that binds Link, Zelda, and Ganon in a cycle of reincarnation throughout the ages. One of the most important aspects of Skyward Sword is its role in the creation of the Master Sword. Throughout the game, Link forges the Goddess Sword into the iconic Master Sword, imbuing it with sacred power through a series of trials. This journey to create the Master Sword ties directly into the game's central theme of Destiny Link is not just a hero by chance, he's the Chosen One, destined to wield the blade that will protect the world from evil for generations to come. The forging of the Master Sword is a significant moment in Zelda lore, and Skyward Sword handles it with the weight and reverence it deserves. One standout item is the Beetle, a remote-controlled flying device that players could use to scout areas, pick up items, and activate switches. The Gust Bellows, which blows gusts of air to clear sand or push enemies, and the Whip, used to grab items or swing across gaps, also added new dimensions to puzzle solving. The dungeons themselves were intricately designed, with challenging puzzles that required both clever use of items and precise motion control to solve. One of the standout dungeons is the Ancient Cistern, which is widely regarded as one of the best dungeons in the entire series. The dungeon features a beautiful and serene upper level inspired by Buddhist iconography, but beneath the surface lies a dark, zombie-filled underworld. The contrast between these two environments is striking, and the dungeon's design is filled with clever puzzles and platforming challenges. The boss fight at the end, against the ancient automaton Kalaktos, is a memorable showdown that requires Link to use both his sword and the whip to dismantle the massive, multi-armed machine. Skyward Sword also introduced a new element to the Zelda series, stamina management. Link now had a stamina meter that would deplete when running, climbing, or performing certain actions. While it added a layer of strategy to movement and combat, it also meant players had to be more mindful of how they approached certain situations, especially during boss fights or tricky platforming sections. Despite its innovations, Skyward Sword received mixed reactions from players, mainly due to the reliance on motion controls. Some found the controls immersive and enjoyable, while others struggled with the precision required, 
which could lead to frustration during combat or puzzle solving. However, the game's narrative, world building, and character development were widely praised, and its contributions to the Zelda lore have made it an essential part of the series. In 2021, Skyward Sword was remastered as Skyward Sword HD for the Nintendo Switch, giving players the option to use traditional button controls instead of motion controls. This version addressed many of the criticisms of the original, allowing a new generation of players to experience the origins of the Zelda timeline with more accessible gameplay. Ultimately, Skyward Sword is a game that dared to experiment with both its gameplay mechanics and its storytelling, offering players a deeper look into the origins of the Zelda universe. Its legacy lies in the way it expanded the lore and laid the groundwork for future entries in the series, and despite its divisive controls, it remains a pivotal chapter in the Zelda saga. Breath of the Wild – Redefining Open World Gaming In 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild landed on both the Nintendo Switch and Wii U, and it wasn't just another Zelda game. It was a revolution. For a series that had always thrived on exploration and discovery, Breath of the Wild took things to a whole new level by rethinking almost everything about the traditional Zelda formula. It tore down the boundaries of past games and handed players an open world with more freedom than ever before. The result? One of the most critically acclaimed and beloved games of all time. Right from the start, Breath of the Wild signaled that it was different. Gone were the structured, linear tutorials or the familiar hand-holding. Instead, players woke up in the middle of the Great Plateau, a vast, sprawling area filled with ruins, forests, and mountains, and were told, go, explore, figure it out. There was no long-winded explanation or strict objectives, just a sense of freedom that had rarely been seen in a Zelda game before. From this point onward, players could go in any direction, explore at their own pace, and tackle the game's challenges however they saw fit. The open-world design of Breath of the Wild is what truly set it apart. Hyrule, once a series of interconnected zones or areas in previous games, was now one massive, continuous world. Whether you wanted to climb mountains, swim across rivers, or glide through the sky, there were no invisible walls stopping you. This open-ended exploration felt fresh and exciting, making Hyrule itself the star of the show. Players were encouraged to explore every nook and cranny, whether to find hidden treasure chests, Korok seeds, or even just to take in the breathtaking views. There was always something around the corner waiting to be discovered. And speaking of climbing mountains, Breath of the Wild introduced a game-changing mechanic that gave players complete freedom, climbing. Link could climb just about anything, from cliff faces to trees to the sides of buildings. If you saw a mountain in the distance, you could actually go there, provided you had enough stamina. This climbing mechanic fundamentally changed how players approached exploration. Instead of being restricted by terrain or obstacles, you could scale almost any surface, which made the world feel more open and accessible than ever. But of course, climbing wasn't the only way to get around. Breath of the Wild also introduced the paraglider, which allowed players to soar through the skies and travel vast distances in seconds. Whether you were gliding from the top of a mountain to a distant shrine or escaping a dangerous situation, the paraglider became an essential tool for navigating Hyrule's massive landscapes. Combined with horses, which you could tame and ride across the land, Breath of the Wild gave players an unprecedented sense of mobility and freedom. The game's sense of freedom didn't just extend to exploration, it also changed how players approached combat, puzzles, and progression. In Breath of the Wild, there were no traditional dungeons or item-gated areas. Instead, players could tackle the game's challenges in any order they wanted. The game featured shrines, mini dungeons scattered throughout the world that tested players' combat skills, puzzle-solving abilities, or sometimes even their ingenuity with the game's physics system. Completing shrines earned you spirit orbs, which could be exchanged to increase Link's stamina or hearts giving players control over how they wanted to build their character. One of the most impressive aspects of Breath of the Wild is its physics engine. The game's world was governed by realistic physics, which meant that players could interact with objects and environments in creative ways. For example, you could use magnesis to move metal objects, stasis to freeze objects in time, or cryonis to create ice platforms on water. The physics-based puzzles encouraged experimentation and creativity, and often there were multiple solutions to any given problem. Whether you were using a Korok leaf to propel a raft across a river or knocking a boulder into a group of enemies, Breath of the Wild rewarded players who thought outside the box. 
Combat in Breath of the Wild was another area where the game broke away from tradition. Instead of relying on a single weapon throughout the game, players had access to a wide variety of weapons, shields, and bows. However, these weapons had durability, meaning they would eventually break after repeated use. While the weapon durability system was divisive among players, it forced players to constantly adapt and change their playstyle. You couldn't rely on the same sword for the entire game. You had to scavenge, explore, and experiment with different types of weapons to survive. One of the most thrilling aspects of Breath of the Wild's combat system was the ability to use the environment to your advantage. You could knock rocks down onto enemies, set fields on fire to create updrafts for your paraglider, or use metal objects to electrocute enemies during a rainstorm. The dynamic, emergent gameplay meant that no two encounters were ever the same, and players were encouraged to be creative in how they approached combat. Of course, the story of Breath of the Wild was another major departure from previous games. The game begins with Link awakening from a hundred-year slumber to find that Hyrule has been devastated by Calamity Ganon, a monstrous, malevolent force that has taken control of Hyrule Castle. The world is in ruins, with most of Hyrule's people scattered or gone. Link's mission is to defeat Calamity Ganon and restore peace to the land, but unlike previous games, the story is told in a more non-linear fashion. The bulk of Breath of the Wild's story is told through memories, flashbacks that Link can unlock by visiting specific locations throughout the world. These memories flesh out the backstory of Zelda, Link, and the Champions, a group of warriors tasked with piloting the Divine Beasts, massive mechanical creatures designed to help fight Calamity Ganon. Zelda's struggle with her own destiny is one of the emotional cores of the story, as she wrestles with the pressure of living up to her role as the Princess of Hyrule and the wielder of the Triforce of Wisdom. Speaking of the Divine Beasts, these massive mechanical dungeons replaced the traditional Zelda dungeons. Each Divine Beast had to be freed from Ganon's control, and doing so required players to solve intricate puzzles and defeat powerful bosses. The Divine Beasts were some of the game's most memorable moments, with each one offering a unique environment and challenge. Unlike traditional dungeons, the Divine Beasts could be tackled in any order, adding to the game's sense of freedom. Breath of the Wild also introduced a new take on survival mechanics. Players had to manage health and stamina, and they could cook various ingredients to create meals and elixirs that provided buffs or restored health. Whether you were foraging for mushrooms, hunting wild boar, or catching fish, the cooking system encouraged exploration and added a layer of survival gameplay that wasn't present in previous games. Upon release, it won multiple Game of the Year awards and was praised for its open-world design, innovative mechanics, and the freedom it gave players. It wasn't just a step forward for the Zelda series, it was a milestone for the entire gaming industry. Breath of the Wild redefined what open-world games could be, influencing countless other titles in the years since its release. Ultimately, Breath of the Wild represents a bold reinvention of the Zelda series. It took the core principles of exploration, discovery, and adventure that had always defined Zelda and expanded them to create something truly groundbreaking. The game's lasting impact on both the series and the gaming industry as a whole cannot be overstated, and its influence will be felt for years to come. Tears of the Kingdom – Continuation of Innovation in 2023, Tears of the Kingdom took center stage as the highly anticipated follow-up to Breath of the Wild, promising to continue the open-world innovation while building on the elements that made its predecessor a modern classic. As the next chapter in the Legend of Zelda series, this game wasn't just about refining what had come before, it was about pushing the boundaries even further. Tears of the Kingdom invited players back into the vast, mysterious world of Hyrule, but this time, the stakes were higher. The world was even more complex, and the innovations were bolder than ever before. One of the most exciting aspects of Tears of the Kingdom was its deep connection to Breath of the Wild, yet it introduced enough new elements to stand on its own. The game continues the story of Link and Zelda as they confront an ancient evil that threatens Hyrule. While Calamity Ganon was the focus in Breath of the Wild, the narrative in Tears of the Kingdom hinted at even older, more mysterious forces at play adding layers of intrigue and new lore to the already rich tapestry of the Zelda universe. Players were eager to dive into the evolving story, curious to uncover the secrets that lay hidden in the ruins of Hyrule. Where Tears of the Kingdom truly shines is in its expansion of exploration and verticality. One of the major new features introduced in this game is the ability to explore the skies above Hyrule. In Breath of the Wild, players could climb mountains and glide through the air with the paraglider, 
but in Tears of the Kingdom, the world has been expanded vertically, allowing players to travel to floating islands, ancient ruins in the clouds, and even deeper subterranean environments. The addition of sky exploration opened up the world of Hyrule in a whole new way, giving players an even greater sense of freedom and discovery. The floating islands above Hyrule became a key part of the game's identity. These islands, suspended high above the clouds, are remnants of an ancient civilization, offering a mix of puzzles, challenges, and secrets waiting to be uncovered. Exploring these islands required not just clever thinking, but also careful planning, as players needed to manage their stamina while climbing, gliding, and using new abilities to navigate the treacherous heights. Each island presented unique environmental challenges, from gravity-defying puzzles to hidden shrines that rewarded exploration and persistence. One of the major gameplay innovations in Tears of the Kingdom was the introduction of new abilities that expanded on the core mechanics from Breath of the Wild. Time manipulation became a central element in both combat and puzzle solving. Players could use new powers to reverse the flow of time on certain objects, allowing for creative solutions to challenges that required thinking outside the box. Whether it was turning back time to rebuild a bridge or rewinding an enemy's movements during a heated battle, this mechanic added depth and variety to the gameplay, keeping things fresh and exciting. Another major feature was the return of Shrine's many dungeons scattered throughout the world. These shrines offered a variety of puzzles and combat trials that tested players' mastery of the game's mechanics. While Tears of the Kingdom retained the physics-based puzzles that players loved from Breath of the Wild, it introduced new elements that took full advantage of the sky and time mechanics, creating challenges that required a mix of spatial awareness, timing, and creativity. Shrines weren't just about solving puzzles anymore, they were about interacting with the world in new and exciting ways. The story in Tears of the Kingdom took a more mythological turn, delving deeper into the history of Hyrule and its ancient past. While Breath of the Wild focused on the fall of Hyrule and the devastation wrought by Calamity Ganon, Tears of the Kingdom looked even further back, exploring the origins of the Zonai civilization, a mysterious and advanced culture that played a crucial role in shaping Hyrule's history. As players uncovered more about the Zonai and their connection to the Divine Beasts and Shika technology, the lore of the Zelda universe grew even richer, offering new mysteries to solve and secrets to uncover. One of the most anticipated aspects of Tears of the Kingdom was the continued development of the relationship between Link and Zelda. In Breath of the Wild, Zelda's character was fleshed out more than in most previous entries, and players were eager to see how her journey would evolve in this new game. Tears of the Kingdom did not disappoint, giving Zelda a more active role in the story while deepening the emotional connection between her and Link. The game's cutscenes and memories revealed more about their bond, and players could feel the weight of the challenges they faced together as they worked to protect Hyrule. Combat in Tears of the Kingdom was once again dynamic and player-driven, with a heavy emphasis on using the environment and abilities to gain the upper hand. The game expanded on the weapon durability system from Breath of the Wild, giving players more options for crafting and repairing weapons as they explored. This allowed for a more strategic approach to combat, as players had to manage their resources and think creatively about how to approach enemies. The boss fights in Tears of the Kingdom were another highlight, with each boss offering unique challenges that required mastery of the game's new mechanics. From sky-based battles on floating islands to time-altering duels against ancient enemies, each boss fight felt like a grand, cinematic moment. The game also introduced new Divine Beasts and Ganon's champions, each with their own abilities and storylines, further expanding the lore and giving players even more reasons to explore every corner of the world. In the end, Tears of the Kingdom wasn't just a sequel to Breath of the Wild, it was a natural evolution of the open-world Zelda formula, building on the innovations of its predecessor while introducing new gameplay mechanics, deeper lore, and even more freedom for players to explore and create their own adventures. The game's vertical exploration, time-based mechanics, and expanded story made it one of the most ambitious entries in the series, cementing its place as a must-play title for fans of both Zelda and open-world games. Tears of the Kingdom showed that the Zelda series was far from running out of ideas. Instead, it proved that the franchise was still capable of surprising and delighting players with fresh, innovative gameplay and storytelling.
With Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Nintendo had successfully redefined what a Zelda game could be while honoring the legacy that had made the series so beloved in the first place. Spin-offs and Side Adventures – Expanding the Zelda Universe While the mainline Zelda games are legendary in their own right, the series has also ventured into a wide variety of spin-offs and side adventures over the years. These spin-offs may not always follow the exact same formula as the core Zelda titles, but they've allowed the Zelda universe to stretch into different genres and gameplay styles, offering fans new ways to experience Hyrule and its characters. From rhythm games to tactical brawlers, the spin-offs have expanded the boundaries of what a Zelda game can be, bringing fresh twists to the franchise while maintaining the essence of what makes Zelda so beloved. One of the earliest and most well-known spin-offs is Link's Awakening. Originally released in 1993 for the Game Boy, Link's Awakening was the first Zelda game to take place outside of Hyrule and not feature Princess Zelda or Ganon. Instead, Link finds himself shipwrecked on the mysterious Koholint Island, where he must awaken the Windfish to escape. The game was quirky and surreal, with a dreamlike quality that set it apart from the rest of the series. Despite the change in setting, Link's Awakening was still very much a Zelda game, with its dungeons, puzzles, and exploration all staying true to the core formula. It was so beloved that it was remade for the Nintendo Switch in 2019, with updated graphics while keeping the original's charm intact. The remake's toy box art style and faithful recreation of the original gameplay made it a hit with both new players and longtime fans. Then there's the Oracle series, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, released for the Game Boy Color in 2001. These two interconnected games, developed by Capcom in collaboration with Nintendo, were unique in that they could be played separately or linked together for a more complete story. Oracle of Ages focused more on puzzles, while Oracle of Seasons leaned into action and combat. Both games featured their own distinct mechanics. Oracle of Ages had players traveling between the past and present to solve puzzles, while Oracle of Seasons allowed players to change the seasons to affect the environment. These games were a huge success, praised for their clever design and the way they expanded on the 2D Zelda formula. Moving into the world of multiplayer, The Legend of Zelda Four Swords took the series in a direction that few had expected – cooperative play. Released in 2002 as an extra mode in the Game Boy Advance version of A Link to the Past, Four Swords allowed up to four players to team up as different colored versions of Link, working together to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. The game's focus on teamwork was a departure from the usual solo adventures, and its success led to the development of a full-fledged sequel, Four Swords Adventures, for the GameCube in 2004. In Four Swords Adventures, players had to cooperate to progress through levels while also competing for rupees and items, adding a fun mix of cooperation and competition to the Zelda formula. Another notable multiplayer entry is The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, released for the Nintendo 3DS in 2015. This game built on the cooperative mechanics of Four Swords, allowing up to three players to work together to solve puzzles and defeat bosses in totem formation, where players stack on top of each other to reach higher areas or attack enemies. While Triforce Heroes wasn't as well received as some of the other multiplayer Zelda games due to its lack of a deep story and solo play limitations, it still offered a fun, light-hearted spin on the traditional Zelda gameplay, with a heavy focus on teamwork and communication. And then there's the Hyrule Warriors series, which completely flipped the script on what fans expect from a Zelda game. First released in 2014 for the Wii U, Hyrule Warriors is a crossover between The Legend of Zelda and Dynasty Warriors, developed by Koei Tecmo. Unlike traditional Zelda games, which focus on exploration and puzzles, Hyrule Warriors is an all-out hack-and-slash game where players take control of iconic Zelda characters like Link, Zelda, Impa, and even Ganondorf, fighting through massive hordes of enemies in large-scale battles. The game's fast-paced combat and epic set pieces made it a hit, and its success led to several follow-ups, including Hyrule Warriors, Definitive Edition for the Switch, and the Age of Calamity prequel. Hyrule Warriors – Age of Calamity, released in 2020, took things a step further by being directly tied to the story of Breath of the Wild. Set 100 years before the events of Breath of the Wild, Age of Calamity explores the great calamity that led to the fall of Hyrule, giving players a chance to experience the events leading up to Link's long slumber. 
The game's storyline and characters were deeply intertwined with the lore of Breath of the Wild, making it a must-play for fans who wanted to dive deeper into the history of Hyrule. The hack-and-slash gameplay was as chaotic and satisfying as ever, but this time it was paired with a deeper narrative that added weight to the battles. In 2019, Nintendo surprised everyone by teaming up with Brace Yourself Games to release Cadence of Hyrule Crypt of the Necrodancer featuring The Legend of Zelda. This game blended the rhythm-based gameplay of Crypt of the Necrodancer with the exploration and combat of Zelda, creating a unique and addictive experience. Players had to move and attack to the beat of the music, making every battle feel like a dance. The game was a refreshing take on the Zelda formula, with its catchy remixes of classic Zelda tunes and pixel art style that paid homage to the series' 2D roots. The Zelda series has also seen its fair share of crossover appearances. Link has been a playable character in the Super Smash Bros. series since its inception. Battling alongside characters from other Nintendo franchises in fast-paced, competitive fights. In addition, Mario Kart 8 introduced Link as a playable racer, complete with a master cycle to ride on. These crossovers have helped to keep Zelda in the spotlight, introducing the character and the world of Hyrule to audiences who might not have played the mainline games. But it's not just games Zelda has expanded into other forms of media too. The Legend of Zelda, the animated series which aired in 1989, might not be remembered for its deep storytelling or animation quality, but it gave fans their first taste of Zelda in a different medium. While the show is often remembered for its cheesy dialogue, particularly Link's infamous line, Well, excuse me, princess. Well, excuse me, princess. It holds a special place in the hearts of fans for its nostalgic value. There have also been manga adaptations, including the popular Himakawa duo's take on several Zelda titles, which gave fans a new way to experience the stories they loved. Over the years, the Zelda spin-offs and side adventures have allowed the series to evolve and experiment with new ideas without losing the core elements that define it. Whether it's through rhythm games, multiplayer mayhem, or hack-and-slash battles, these spin-offs have enriched the Zelda universe and shown that the series is more versatile than anyone could have imagined. Ultimately, the spin-offs and side adventures are proof that The Legend of Zelda can adapt and thrive in just about any genre. From the rhythm-filled action of Cadence of Hyrule to the chaotic battles of Hyrule Warriors, these games have added new dimensions to the Zelda franchise while still keeping the spirit of adventure, exploration, and creativity that fans have come to love. Music of Hyrule – The Soundtrack of an Adventure The Legend of Zelda series is known not only for its engaging gameplay and rich world-building, but also for its incredible music. From the very first notes of the overworld theme in the original Legend of Zelda to the sweeping orchestral scores of Breath of the Wild, the music of Zelda has always played a crucial role in setting the tone for the player's journey. Whether it's an adrenaline-pumping boss battle theme or a quiet, serene melody playing as you explore a peaceful village, the music of Hyrule has become as unforgettable as the Master Sword or Link's green tunic. At the heart of Zelda's music legacy is Koji Kondo, the composer who crafted the unforgettable themes that have come to define the series. Kondo has been with Nintendo since the mid-1980s, and his work on the Legend of Zelda series began with the original game's overworld theme. This melody, which plays as players guide Link across the open fields of Hyrule, is now one of the most recognizable pieces of video game music in history. With its bold, adventurous tones, it perfectly captures the essence of the Zelda series. The feeling of embarking on an epic quest, with danger lurking around every corner, but also the promise of discovery and heroism. That original overworld theme has been reinterpreted and rearranged in countless ways throughout the series, making its return in games like A Link to the Past, Ocarina of Time, and even Breath of the Wild. Yet, each time it brings with it that same sense of excitement and nostalgia, connecting the many different games in the series to their shared legacy. Kondo's ability to craft melodies that stick with players long after they've put down the controller is one of the reasons why the music of Zelda has endured for so long. Of course, it's not just the overworld theme that has become iconic. The series is filled with unforgettable pieces of music that evoke a wide range of emotions and set the tone for each of the game's many locations, battles, and moments of reflection. One of the most memorable is Zelda's Lullaby which first appeared in A Link to the Past and became a staple in later games. 
Zelda's lullaby is often associated with moments of peace, wisdom, and calm, usually playing when Princess Zelda is present or when Link is receiving guidance. Its soothing melody is both simple and elegant, embodying the princess's role as the bearer of the Triforce of Wisdom. Ocarina of Time, in particular, took the concept of music as a core mechanic and ran with it. In this game, players use the Ocarina of Time itself to play a variety of songs, each with magical properties that affect the world around them. From the Song of Time, which can manipulate the flow of time itself, to Epona's song, which summons Link's trusty horse, the Ocarina became more than just an instrument. It was a key tool for progressing through the game's puzzles and unlocking new areas. The act of playing the ocarina, using the N64 controller's C buttons to mimic different notes, created a sense of connection between the player and the music, making each song feel like a powerful spell that could change the world. Ocarina of Time's soundtrack is filled with beloved tracks, from the Gerudo Valley theme, with its energetic, flamenco-inspired rhythm, to the eerie and unsettling Forest Temple theme, which creates a haunting atmosphere as Link navigates the dungeon's twisting corridors. Each of these tracks perfectly captures the mood of their respective areas, enhancing the player's experience by immersing them in the world of Hyrule. Majora's Mask took the musical themes established in Ocarina of Time and pushed them in a darker, more experimental direction. The game's Song of Healing, for example, is a somber melody that plays during moments of emotional catharsis as Link helps troubled souls find peace in the doomed land of Termina. The repetition of the three-day cycle in Majora's Mask also gave rise to unique compositions like the Clock Town theme, which changes slightly each day, growing more intense and hurried as the moon draws closer to crashing into the town. This subtle shift in music mirrors the escalating tension in the story, adding to the game's sense of impending doom. As the Zelda series moved into the realm of orchestral scores, the music only became more grand and epic. Twilight Princess featured a sweeping cinematic soundtrack that perfectly matched its darker, more serious tone. The Hyrule Field theme in Twilight Princess felt like a full-blown orchestral suite, with layers of brass, strings, and percussion building to an adventurous crescendo as Link galloped across the vast plains on Epona. The game's soundtrack added a sense of grandeur to the story, making Link's journey feel even more epic in scope. Skyward Sword took things even further by featuring the first fully orchestrated soundtrack in the series. The use of live instruments gave the music a richness and depth that was unlike anything seen before in Zelda. The Ballad of the Goddess, one of the central themes of Skyward Sword, stood out not just for its orchestral power, but for the clever musical twist that it was actually a reversed version of Zelda's lullaby, tying the new game back to the series' roots. This kind of musical connection between games helped build the sense that every Zelda game is part of a larger, interconnected mythos, with recurring musical motifs reinforcing the series' long history. And then came Breath of the Wild, which took a more subtle approach to its soundtrack. Instead of the grand orchestral scores that had become a staple in previous games, Breath of the Wild opted for a minimalist, almost ambient soundscape. The music in this game is often quiet and sparse, letting the sounds of nature wind blowing through the trees, birds chirping or rain falling take center stage. This approach emphasized the game's themes of solitude and exploration, making the world of Hyrule feel vast and alive. When music does appear in Breath of the Wild, it's usually in the form of delicate piano melodies, like the peaceful Great Plateau theme or the nostalgic Kakariko Village theme. These gentle tunes underscore the game's moments of quiet beauty, while also serving as a contrast to the more intense themes that play during battles or encounters with Guardians. Despite its quieter tone, the music in Breath of the Wild still manages to evoke a sense of wonder and adventure. Manaka Kataoka, who composed much of the game's music, used the piano to create an intimate, almost meditative atmosphere, encouraging players to take their time as they explored the world. The lack of constant, bombastic music gave the game's key moments, like the confrontation with Calamity Ganon or the discovery of a divine beast, even more impact as the soundtrack swells to match the intensity of these encounters. The music of Zelda has also been celebrated in the real world, with the Legend of Zelda Symphony of the Goddesses, a concert tour that has brought the series' iconic music to life with full orchestral performances. Fans around the globe have gathered to hear live renditions of their favorite tracks. 
From the Hyrule Castle theme to the Wind Waker's Dragon Roost Island, these concerts are a statement to just how much the music of Zelda has resonated with players over the years, becoming a key part of the series' identity. In the end, the music of Hyrule is more than just background noise, it's a core part of what makes The Legend of Zelda so memorable. From the simple 8-bit tunes of the original game to the sweeping orchestral scores of the modern era, Zelda's music has always been about enhancing the player's experience, drawing them deeper into the world, and creating moments of emotional resonance. Whether you're embarking on a grand quest or simply wandering the fields of Hyrule, the music of Zelda is there to guide you, making every adventure feel timeless and unforgettable. Impact on Pop Culture – Zelda Beyond the Games The influence of the Legend of Zelda series extends far beyond the world of video games. Since its debut in 1986, Zelda has become a cornerstone of pop culture, with its characters, music, and themes transcending the medium of gaming to leave a lasting impact on film, television, music, fashion, and even academic studies. The adventures of Link, Zelda, and Ganon have become cultural touchstones, with the series influencing not just gamers, but creators across a wide array of media. Whether through references in popular shows, fan projects, or official crossovers, the legacy of The Legend of Zelda can be felt in nearly every corner of entertainment. One of the earliest indicators of Zelda's pop culture relevance came with the 1989 animated series based on the game. While the show may not have been a critical success largely remembered for its somewhat cheesy dialogue, particularly Link's infamous, well, excuse me, princess, catchphrase, it marked the first time Zelda made the leap from game to screen. The series ran for a short 13-episode stint as part of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, but despite its brief run, it left a lasting impression on fans who grew up with it. For better or worse, the animated show helped introduce the world of Hyrule to a broader audience, cementing Link and Zelda as recognizable characters beyond the gaming community. The influence of Zelda on other media can be seen in countless references, homages, and parodies in television shows, movies, and even music. Zelda-themed jokes and references have appeared in shows like The Simpsons, South Park, and Adventure Time, where Link's green tunic and iconic sword have become shorthand for adventure and heroism. In fact, Link's silent, stoic demeanor has made him a frequent subject of parody with shows often poking fun at his quiet determination and the silent hero trope. These references show just how deeply Zelda has embedded itself in popular culture, becoming a recognizable symbol even for people who may not have played the games themselves. In addition to that, Zelda has made its mark in the world of fashion and design. Over the years, Link's green tunic, hat, and master sword have become iconic symbols of video game culture, inspiring everything from cosplay to official clothing lines. Major fashion brands such as Uniqlo have released Zelda-themed apparel, while fan-made merchandise featuring the Triforce symbol, Hylian Shield, or Rupees is ubiquitous at gaming conventions and online stores. The series' visual design with its intricate symbols and motifs lends itself naturally to fashion, and it's not uncommon to see Triforce tattoos, Hylian jewelry, and even Zelda-inspired furniture making appearances in fan communities. The Zelda franchise has also inspired countless fan projects, including fan-made games, artwork, and even full-fledged animated series. One of the most notable fan projects is the Zelda Timeline Theory, a fan-driven effort to piece together the complex and often contradictory timeline of the Zelda series. For years, fans debated how the various games fit together in the overall chronology, and while Nintendo eventually released an official timeline in the Hyrule Historia book, the fan theory that had built up around it helped sustain interest in the lore of the Zelda universe. This fan passion for the intricacies of the series is a statement to just how deeply players engage with the world of Hyrule and its history. On the academic side, The Legend of Zelda has been the subject of numerous essays, books, and scholarly papers exploring its themes, storytelling techniques, and cultural impact. In universities around the world, Zelda is often used as a case study in game design courses, where it is praised for its non-linear storytelling, open-world exploration, and innovative gameplay mechanics. The themes of mythology, heroism, and the eternal struggle between good and evil in Zelda have drawn comparisons to works of literature like The Lord of the Rings and Arthurian legends, placing the series in a broader cultural context that transcends gaming. 
Finally, one of the most significant ways Zelda has impacted pop culture is through its influence on the fan community. Zelda fans are some of the most dedicated in the gaming world, and they have created an enormous amount of content in tribute to the series. Whether it's fan art, cosplay, or in-depth lore analysis, Zelda fans have kept the spirit of the series alive between game releases, contributing to its enduring popularity. The cosplay community, in particular, has embraced Zelda, with characters like Link, Zelda, and Midna becoming some of the most cosplayed figures at conventions worldwide. Fans have created everything from 3D-printed replicas of the Master Sword and Hylian Shield to full-blown fan films that explore untold stories within the Zelda universe. Ultimately, The Legend of Zelda has become much more than just a video game series, it's a cultural phenomenon. Its influence can be seen in music, fashion, art, and entertainment, and its characters have become some of the most memorable in gaming history. Its impact goes far beyond the controller, touching the lives of millions and inspiring generations of creators and fans alike. Fan Theories and Timelines The Mythos of Zelda The Legend of Zelda series has captivated players for decades, not just because of its epic gameplay and sweeping narratives, but also because of the vast and often mysterious lore that underpins its world. Over the years, the Zelda games have developed a deep and intricate mythos, with recurring characters, locations, and themes that span multiple timelines and generations. This has led to one of the most passionate aspects of the Zelda fanbase, fan theories and timeline debates, trying to piece together the official and unofficial timelines, as well as deciphering the deeper meaning behind the series' events, has become something of a pastime for dedicated fans. Whether debating the role of the Triforce or speculating on the origins of certain characters, the mythos of Zelda has sparked countless fan discussions, theories, and arguments. One of the most significant elements that fans have tried to untangle over the years is the Zelda timeline itself. Since the release of the original game in 1986, players have been wondering how the various games fit together in the overall chronology. The series doesn't follow a strict linear progression, with different entries jumping between different versions of Hyrule, different incarnations of Link, Zelda, and Ganon, and even different worlds altogether. Early on, players could see connections between certain games. For instance, A Link to the Past was clearly a prequel to the original Legend of Zelda, and Ocarina of Time was a major origin point for the series, but the exact order of the games remained elusive for many years. The discussion around the Zelda timeline reached a fever pitch after the release of Ocarina of Time in 1998, which introduced a pivotal moment in the series' lore, time travel. In Ocarina of Time, Link is able to travel between his childhood and adulthood, and this duality raised questions about how the events of the game impacted the larger timeline. After defeating Ganon in the adult timeline, Link is sent back to his childhood to live out his life, effectively creating two parallel timelines. This split timeline theory quickly became one of the most prominent fan theories, with players speculating that the events of future games could take place in one of these two timelines. The split timeline theory was eventually confirmed by Nintendo in the Hyrule Historia, an official guide released in 2011 that laid out the official timeline of the Zelda series for the first time. According to the Hyrule Historia, the timeline diverges into three distinct branches following the events of Ocarina of Time. 1. The Decline Timeline In this timeline, Link is defeated by Ganon in Ocarina of Time, leading to the events of A Link to the Past, The Legend of Zelda, and Zelda II, The Adventure of Link. This branch represents a world where Ganon's victory plunges Hyrule into a dark age, and Link's descendants must rise up to defeat evil once again. 2. The Child Timeline After after Link is sent back to his childhood at the end of Ocarina of Time, he warns Zelda of Ganon's plot, leading to Ganon's capture before he can seize power. This timeline leads to the events of Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, and Four Swords Adventures, where Link's efforts in the past prevent Ganon's rise, but other threats still emerge. 3. The Adult Timeline In this timeline, Link defeats Ganon as an adult, but he is then sent back in time, leaving Hyrule without a hero. This leads to the events of The Wind Waker, where Hyrule is flooded by the gods to stop Ganon's return, and Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks, which take place in the new land that arises after the flood. While the Hyrule Historia provided an official timeline for the series, it didn't put an end to fan theories by any means. In fact, it sparked even more debates, as fans dissected the timeline and speculated on the gaps between games. For instance, 
How do games like The Minish Cap and Four Swords fit into the larger narrative? What exactly caused the Great Flood in The Wind Waker? And what are the implications of the Zonai civilization introduced in Tears of the Kingdom? One of the most popular ongoing fan theories is the concept of the Triforce of Courage's hidden connection to various games. While the Triforce, the sacred relic of power, wisdom, and courage, is a central theme throughout the series, fans have long speculated about how its power is passed down through the generations. Some fans believe that each incarnation of Link and Zelda is not just a new individual taking up the mantle of hero and princess, but rather a continuation of a divine bloodline linked to the Triforce itself. This theory suggests that the Triforce of Courage, which Link often wields, plays a crucial role in his repeated reincarnation across the ages, ensuring that a hero always rises when Hyrule is in danger. Another major theory revolves around Majora's Mask and its darker, more unsettling themes. Fans have long speculated that the world of Termina, where the events of Majora's Mask take place, may not be a physical location at all, but rather a metaphorical or even dreamlike world that represents Link's personal journey through grief. The game's emphasis on loss, death, and time has led some to theorize that Majora's Mask is a reflection of Link's own mental state, and that the people and events of Termina are symbolic of the stages of grief that Link is experiencing after the events of Ocarina of Time. This theory has been supported by the fact that many of the characters in Termina are mirror images of people Link encountered in Hyrule, suggesting that Termina may be a creation of his subconscious mind. Beyond the timeline debates and narrative speculation, fans have also developed countless theories about the series' many mystical elements, such as the true origins of the Master Sword or the nature of Hyrule's gods. One popular theory, for instance, posits that the golden goddesses Din, Nehru, and Ferori are not just creators of the world, but also have a direct influence on the events of the series, subtly guiding Link, Zelda, and Ganon through their eternal struggle. This theory suggests that the goddesses are responsible for the reincarnation of the main characters, and that their power is linked to the Triforce itself, making them central figures in the ongoing battle between good and evil. Some fans have even speculated about the Zonai, an ancient and mysterious civilization first mentioned in Breath of the Wild and explored further in Tears of the Kingdom. While little is known about the Zonai, their advanced technology and connection to ancient Hyrule have sparked theories that they may be the original builders of the Divine Beasts, or that they hold the key to understanding the true nature of Calamity Ganon. As more information is revealed in future games, it's likely that fans will continue to theorize about the Zonai's role in the larger Zelda mythos. Despite the official timeline laid out in Hyrule Historia, the true beauty of The Legend of Zelda lies in its openness to interpretation. The series' rich mythology, combined with its often ambiguous storytelling, allows for endless fan theories and speculation. This openness has fostered a deep and enduring connection between the Zelda games and their players, as fans continue to analyze, debate, and dream up new ideas about the world of Hyrule and its many mysteries. Ultimately, the timeline theories and fan speculation are standouts to the Zelda series' lasting impact. Fans' willingness to dig deep into the lore, dissect every detail, and build entire theories around the games shows just how much The Legend of Zelda means to those who play Play it. It's not just about beating bosses or collecting items, it's about exploring a vast mythological world where every rock could hide a secret and every story might have deeper meaning. Legacy and Influence – Zelda's Impact on Modern Gaming Few video game franchises can boast the kind of lasting legacy that The Legend of Zelda has cultivated since its debut in 1986. Zelda's innovations in game design, narrative structure, and exploration have influenced countless titles across various genres, shaping the evolution of video games in ways that are still felt today. From open-world mechanics to puzzle-solving design and even storytelling techniques, The Legend of Zelda has set the standard for what an adventure game can be, and its impact on modern gaming is undeniable. One of the most significant contributions that Zelda has made to the gaming world is its emphasis on exploration. From the very first game in the series, players were encouraged to roam freely across the vast world of Hyrule, discovering secrets, solving puzzles, and uncovering hidden dungeons at their own pace. This non-linear approach to exploration was revolutionary at the time, particularly in a world where many video games followed a more rigid, level-based structure. The Legend of Zelda gave players a sense of freedom that was rare in gaming at the time, and this open-ended design became a core feature of the series moving forward. The influence of Zelda's exploration-first design can be seen in a wide variety of modern games. Titles like Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim, 
The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, and Horizon Zero Dawn all owe a debt to Zelda's approach to open-world design, where players are encouraged to venture off the beaten path and discover the world's many secrets on their own. Breath of the Wild, in particular, took this concept to the next level, delivering a vast open world where players had almost complete freedom to go wherever they wanted from the start. This reinvention of open-world gaming inspired a new wave of developers to adopt more organic and freeform exploration mechanics, leading to games like Genshin Impact, which is heavily influenced by Breath of the Wild's open-world structure and physics-based gameplay. Beyond exploration, Zelda's puzzle design has also had a profound impact on game development. The series is renowned for its intricate dungeon puzzles, which challenge players to think critically and creatively in order to progress. Whether it's manipulating time in Ocarina of Time, using items like the hookshot or gust bellows in clever ways, or navigating the physics-based challenges in Breath of the Wild, Zelda's puzzles have always been about more than just finding keys or hitting switches. They require players to engage with the world in unique ways, often blending combat, exploration, and puzzle solving into seamless experiences. Many modern games have taken inspiration from Zelda's puzzle-driven design. Tomb Raider and Uncharted series, for instance, feature puzzle-laden tombs and ancient ruins that echo the Zelda dungeon experience. Even titles like Portal and The Talos Principle, which are heavily puzzle-focused, borrow from the way Zelda games present their puzzles as part of a larger, interconnected world. The ability to make puzzles feel like a natural part of exploration and narrative progression, rather than isolated challenges, is something that Zelda perfected and that many other games have sought to emulate. Another major contribution that Zelda has made to modern gaming is in the realm of storytelling. While early entries in the series featured relatively simple plots, later games like Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Breath of the Wild introduced more complex narratives that combined epic, world-saving quests with personal emotional stories. Ocarina of Time, in particular, revolutionized storytelling in games by incorporating time travel, multiple timelines, and a deeper emotional connection between the characters. Link's journey from a young boy to the hero of time, his relationship with Zelda, and his ultimate battle with Ganon became touchstones for how video game stories could be told in a more cinematic, character-driven way. The success of Zelda's storytelling opened the door for other games to explore more intricate narratives. Games like Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, and even The Last of Us have taken cues from Zelda in terms of blending large-scale, world-saving adventures with personal, character-driven stories. The Legend of Zelda also paved the way for the idea of multiple timelines and alternate realities in games, something that has become more common in series like Bioshock, Nier, Automata, and Dark Souls, where different playthroughs or paths can lead to different outcomes and storylines. One of the more unique aspects of Zelda's influence is the way it has shaped combat systems in action-adventure games. Zelda's Z-targeting system, introduced in Ocarina of Time, was a revolutionary mechanic that allowed players to lock onto enemies in a 3D space, making combat smoother and more intuitive. This system became a blueprint for 3D combat in countless other games, from Devil May Cry to Dark Souls. The ability to target and strafe around enemies while using various weapons and items in combat has become a standard feature in action games, and Ocarina of Time's approach to combat design is still being felt in modern game mechanics. Zelda's boss battles, too, have had a lasting impact on gaming. The series is known for its large-scale, multi-phase bosses that require players to use the skills and items they've acquired throughout the game to defeat. The idea of incorporating environmental elements enemy patterns and item usage into boss fights has been echoed in many games, including series like God of War, Shadow of the Colossus, and Hollow Knight. Zelda bosses often test the player's mastery of the game's mechanics, and this approach to boss design has been adopted by developers across a wide range of genres. Another way in which Zelda has left its mark is through its innovation with technology and game mechanics. The physics-based gameplay introduced in Breath of the Wild, where objects in the world react realistically to elements like wind, fire, and gravity, has set a new standard for emergent gameplay. Players can experiment with the game's systems in ways that feel organic, like using wind to propel rafts, setting grass on fire to create updrafts for gliding or manipulating objects with Magnesis to solve puzzles. This kind of emergent gameplay, where the world feels responsive and dynamic, has inspired developers to push the boundaries of what is possible in an open-world setting. Games like Death Stranding and Red Dead Redemption 2 have taken similar approaches to world-building, creating environments where the player 
his interactions with the world feel meaningful and dynamic. Beyond the mechanics and design elements, Zelda has influenced the very idea of what it means to create a heroic journey in games. The character of Link, the silent protagonist who represents the player's courage and determination, has become a template for the hero's journey in gaming. His quest to save Zelda and defeat Ganon is an archetype that has been echoed in numerous games over the years. Link's role as the chosen hero, often thrust into adventure without warning, has become a classic trope in video game storytelling, influencing characters and games games like Kratos in God of War, Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn, and even Geralt in The Witcher series. In many ways, the legacy of Zelda is about innovation and inspiration. Each entry in the series pushes the boundaries of what games can be, whether through its innovative combat systems, intricate puzzles, or deep emotional storytelling. Zelda's influence extends beyond just the games themselves, it's woven into the fabric of game design, inspiring both indie developers and major studios alike. It's no exaggeration to say that The Legend of Zelda has changed the landscape of gaming forever, and its influence will continue to be felt for generations to come. As the series moves forward with games like Tears of the Kingdom, the innovations and design choices that made Zelda a household name continue to inspire. It's not just a series about rescuing a princess or defeating evil. The Legend of Zelda is a prime example to the power of adventure, imagination, and the endless possibilities of game design. Future of the Legend of Zelda Franchise The Legend of Zelda series has been a pillar of the gaming industry for over three decades, with each new release building on the legacy of the games that came before it while introducing new innovations that push the boundaries of the action-adventure genre. With the overwhelming success of Breath of the Wild and the excitement surrounding its sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, the future of the Zelda franchise seems brighter than ever. Fans are eager to see where Nintendo takes the series next, and how the developers will continue to innovate and expand on what has made Zelda such an enduring success. As the franchise moves forward, there are several directions that Nintendo could explore, each offering exciting possibilities for the future of Hyrule, Link, and Zelda. The success of Breath of the Wild's open-world design, in particular, has set a new benchmark for the series, and it's likely that future Zelda games will continue to embrace the sense of freedom and exploration that made that title so groundbreaking. However, there's also room for the franchise to revisit some of its more traditional elements and even experiment with new mechanics, genres, and narrative structures. One of the most anticipated developments in the Zelda series is the continued evolution of open-world gameplay. Breath of the Wild was praised for its expansive world, where players had near total freedom to explore and interact with the environment in ways that felt organic and rewarding. The game's physics-based systems, non-linear progression, and emphasis on discovery set a new standard for open-world games, and Tears of the Kingdom looks poised to build on that foundation with even more innovations, particularly in terms of vertical exploration and new mechanics like time manipulation. The introduction of floating islands and deeper underground areas in Tears of the Kingdom suggests that future Zelda games could continue to expand the world of Hyrule not just horizontally, but vertically, offering players new layers of depth and complexity to explore. Looking beyond the mechanics, the narrative direction of future Zelda games is another area of intrigue for fans. While the series has always been known for its epic, high-stakes stories, often centered around the eternal conflict between Link, Zelda, and Ganon, Recent entries have also focused more on character development and emotional depth. Breath of the Wild, for instance, delved into Zelda's personal struggles as she grappled with her destiny and the weight of her role as the protector of Hyrule. Fans have expressed a desire to see Zelda take on a more active role in future games, with many hoping that she could even become a playable character. While this remains speculative, it's clear that the franchise has room to explore new dynamics between its core characters potentially offering deeper and more complex narratives that move beyond the traditional hero's journey. There's also the possibility that Nintendo could explore new timelines or even alternate realities within the Zelda universe. The split timeline theory introduced in Ocarina of Time and solidified in Hyrule Historia opened the door for multiple versions of Hyrule to exist simultaneously, each with its own unique history, heroes, and challenges. This concept of parallel worlds or alternate realities has been touched on in games like A Link Between Worlds and Twilight Princess, but there's still plenty of potential for future Zelda games to dive deeper into the idea of multiverses or explore entirely new branches of the timeline. Perhaps future entries could introduce new versions of Link, 
or even explore what happens when the traditional roles of hero and villain are reversed. Speaking of innovation, the future of Zelda's gameplay mechanics is another area ripe for exploration. Breath of the Wild introduced several new mechanics, like weapon durability, cooking, and the stamina system that gave players more control over how they approached combat, exploration, and survival. While some of these mechanics like weapon durability proved divisive among fans, they demonstrated Nintendo's willingness to experiment with the formula in meaningful ways. As the series moves forward, it's likely that we'll see even more experimentation with how players interact with the world. For example, we could see expanded crafting systems, more detailed physics interactions, or even multiplayer or co-op gameplay that allows players to explore Hyrule together. One of the most exciting possibilities for the future of the Zelda franchise is the potential for new technology to further enhance the gameplay experience. With the Nintendo Switch already offering a unique hybrid console experience, it's possible that future Zelda titles could take advantage of even more advanced hardware, whether through VR, augmented reality, or the next generation of consoles. Imagine exploring the vast landscapes of Hyrule in virtual reality, fully immersed in the world as you swing the Master Sword, solve puzzles, and ride across the fields on Epona. While this might sound far-fetched, Nintendo has always been at the forefront of experimenting with new technology, and the Zelda series could be the perfect vehicle to showcase what's possible with future gaming innovations. Another aspect that fans are eager to see expanded in future Zelda games is the role of side quests in world building. Breath of the Wild introduced a more robust system of side quests and NPC interactions, allowing players to engage with the world in a deeper way. Side characters like Kilton, Beetle, and the Zora Prince Sidon became fan favorites, and the series has the potential to further develop these types of side stories in future games. Expanding the role of towns, villages, and factions could help flesh out the world of Hyrule even more, giving players a sense of living in a vibrant, dynamic world. This could also pave the way for more narrative-driven side quests, where players help shape the world around them in meaningful ways. On the more experimental side, future Zelda games could even explore new genres or gameplay styles. While the series has dabbled in various genres with spin-offs like Hyrule Warriors and Cadence of Hyrule, the mainline Zelda games have largely stuck to the action-adventure format. However, with the increasing popularity of genres like RPGs, survival games, and roguelikes, it's possible that future Zelda titles could incorporate elements from these genres to offer fresh experiences. For instance, a more RPG-focused Zelda could allow players to customize Link's abilities, skills, and equipment in greater detail, or a roguelike Zelda could introduce procedurally generated dungeons that change with each playthrough. And of course, Nintendo's commitment to the series' rich legacy suggests that we'll continue to see remakes and remasters of classic Zelda titles, bringing them to new audiences and modern platforms. The success of remakes like Link's Awakening and the HD versions of Twilight Princess and Wind Waker show that there's still a huge appetite for revisiting these classic adventures with updated visuals and mechanics. Fans have long speculated about potential remakes of games like Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask using modern technology, and while nothing has been confirmed, the possibility remains tantalizing. Ultimately, the future of the Legend of Zelda franchise is full of exciting possibilities, whether through new open-world innovations, deeper storytelling, or bold new experiments with gameplay and technology, Zelda continues to evolve while staying true to its roots as a series about adventure, exploration, and discovery. With each new entry, Nintendo has shown that the series is not afraid to push the boundaries of what video games can be, and it's safe to say that whatever the future holds, The Legend of Zelda will remain one of the most beloved and influential franchises in gaming history. Conclusion The Timeless Journey of The Legend of Zelda For over three decades, The Legend of Zelda has captivated players with its rich worlds, unforgettable characters, and timeless themes of courage, wisdom, and power. From the humble beginnings of 8-bit graphics in 1986, to the vast open world of Breath of the Wild and the skyward exploration of Tears of the Kingdom, the series has consistently redefined what it means to embark on an adventure in the world of video games. But more than that, Zelda has become a cultural icon, a symbol of exploration, discovery, and heroism that resonates far beyond the confines of Hyrule. Throughout its storied history, 
The Legend of Zelda has never been content to rest on its laurels. Each new entry brings with it a sense of innovation and evolution. Whether it's introducing 3D gameplay with Ocarina of Time, reimagining the series with Wind Waker's cel-shaded art, or pioneering a new approach to open-world games with Breath of the Wild. The series' willingness to take risks and reinvent itself has been key to its enduring popularity, keeping both longtime fans and newcomers alike eagerly anticipating what comes next. One of the defining aspects of The Legend of Zelda is its ability to strike a balance between nostalgia and innovation. Every game feels like a continuation of a grand myth, where familiar elements like the Triforce, Master Sword, and Princess Zelda weave together with new characters, settings, and mechanics. It's a series that respects its past while constantly looking toward the future, finding fresh ways to tell the story of Link, the eternal hero who rises to meet every challenge. At its core, The Legend of Zelda is more than just a collection of video games. It's a journey, a journey that players embark on every time they pick up the controller and step into the shoes of Link. Whether they're solving intricate puzzles in the depths of a dungeon, exploring the vast landscapes of Hyrule, or facing off against a towering boss, players are participating in a timeless adventure that has spanned generations. The series' themes of courage, resilience, and hope resonate just as strongly today as they did when the first game was released making The Legend of Zelda not just a gaming icon, but a touchstone of modern storytelling. As the series continues to evolve, there's no doubt that The Legend of Zelda will keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in gaming. The franchise's influence on the industry is undeniable, and its impact on pop culture is far-reaching. Yet, despite all the technical advancements and modern flourishes, the heart of Zelda remains the same. It's about the thrill of adventure, the joy of exploration, and the triumph of good over evil. Whether you're battling Ganon in 8-bit, solving time-based puzzles in 3D, or exploring a sprawling open world, every Zelda game offers a unique and unforgettable experience. Looking back on the series' incredible legacy, it's clear that The Legend of Zelda has become more than just a video game, it's a cultural phenomenon, a beloved franchise that has stood the test of time. From the 1986 classic to the latest innovations in Tears of the Kingdom, the journey of The Legend of Zelda is far from over. If anything, the best may still be yet to come, as new generations of players discover the magic of Hyrule for themselves. In the end, the timeless journey of The Legend of Zelda is a celebration of the imagination, creativity, and the enduring power of storytelling. Thanks for joining us on this epic Zelda journey. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button, drop a comment below with your favorite Zelda game, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of gaming. See you in the next adventure.